Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Enigmius and this is Robocraft Early Access Coverage. Today we're talking about some build techniques, some things to keep in mind as a new builder, new player to the game, whatever, to give you a bit of an edge structurally in terms of the design of your vehicle, maybe uh, give you a bit of an advantage over people who don't know these little tips and tricks. And the goal here is to keep it as simple as possible. I know some people are doing some crazy things with wedges, aligning them in a particular direction relative to one another to spread, to prevent the spread of damage from one block to the other. That's kind of an advanced concept. For this, we just want to keep it simple. We want to keep it light, the kind of thing that you can take with you when you're creating your first vehicle and kind of put it into motion so that you don't kind of have some of the difficulties that other people seem to have. Now, to illustrate the concepts, we're going to be looking at two vehicles that I've made that uh, in some ways illustrate the concepts well and in other ways demonstrate exactly how not to do things. And we're going to start off with the Raging Rabbit. This is my Tier 1 vehicle. It's seen a few upgrades since it was brand new, but basically it's the same as it was in terms of the layout of everything. So we're going to get in here and take a look at it. You can see it's it's a complete looking vehicle. It doesn't look like a bunch of blocks kind of strapped together with wheels and guns and a driver's seat, which is quite often what you see people driving around in. And those vehicles often get blown up very quickly because they don't have much substance to the build. But one of the most important things that I've learned or that one of the things that's extremely important to me is the stability of the vehicle when you're driving around. We don't want the vehicle to flip over onto its head when you hit a bump in the road. That's kind of a worst case scenario. There's nothing more frustrating than being stuck on your back waiting for the match to end because you forgot to put a flipper on your vehicle and you got bumped by someone and you got rolled like 10 seconds into the match. So while I, I've got it in my mind, we will take a look at this very quickly. Uh, something that you should be aware of is this item here in the tech tree directly below uh, start, two blocks down, you see the alignment rectifier it's also known as a flipper to the community. You put this on your vehicle, and if you get flipped upside down, the flipper will activate, and then you press F, and it will flip you over. That's the whole purpose of this little gadget. It works very well. It's not a bad thing to have on any vehicle, but I would prefer to take the CPU load cost from the alignment rectifier and put it to something else. Now, CPU load cost is the limiting factor in terms of how much you can put on your vehicle. Your maximum CPU load is determined by your level, and you can see both of these, your level and your CPU load in the upper left corner of the screen. It'd be very difficult to see in this video, but when you're looking on your own screen, it'd be easy for you to find. Every block that you add to a vehicle adds to the CPU load. Every block has a cost that you can see before you even put it on the vehicle. If you want to place a block on the vehicle that would push it over the maximum load, it won't let you place that block. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It's kind of a trade-off sometimes, especially with me, because I do use a lot of blocks in my builds. I can't put as many guns as I might like because I've got too many blocks. But you'll work that out with your own designs. It's just good to know that that's the limiting factor and that's how you can determine. And specifically with regards to the, the flipper, it's worth almost an extra gun in terms of CPU cost. So if you can design around that, it's maybe not a bad thing. So to avoid the possibility of being flipped, the key is a low center of gravity and a wide wheelbase. That's literally all you need to know. And you look at this vehicle, if we go down to ground level here, it's not very tall. I've seen vehicles that were half as wide and taller than this. And those are the ones that you usually drive by 30 seconds after the match starts and they're on their side and they stay there until the match ends. This vehicle has uh, actually not at all a wide wheelbase relative to how things go together. If we kind of sneak underneath here, hopefully you can see there's this row of blocks down the middle and then all of the wheels are stuck to that row of blocks. So the alignment of the wheels and the way that they're put together doesn't make them wider than your normal vehicle. But what makes this overall wider is this shroud that I have on the sides of each of the wheels. You can see we've got a couple of extra blocks worth of space to either side of the wheels. And what this does is, first of all, it adds that much needed stability. 
if I do happen to go up on one set of wheels, the shroud on the side is going to keep the vehicle from flipping. It also adds a measure of protection to the wheels themselves. Now, this is another key thing when we're talking about the wheels is if all our wheels get blown off, we can't move anymore. Well, unless you're in a flyer, but that's obviously another discussion. In this case, I've chosen on all of my vehicles to cover the wheels behind a shroud so that they aren't just like a one shot target to pop them off and disable me. Someone who wants to take my wheels off has to work for it. So there's the shroud there. And then, of course, the extra width of this vehicle. We can show some footage a little bit later on of my other vehicle and how wide it is compared to the average vehicle that you see in these matches. Much, much wider. And it's not because I'm adding like five, ten blocks off either side. It's just an extra couple blocks in the form of a shroud around the wheels that takes care of that. Now, the other thing, into, while we're talking about shrouds, this is the steering wheel. This is the forwardmost wheel on the vehicle. And if you go from the forwardmost point on that wheel, look at how far someone has to shoot through in order to get through to the wheel. They have to go from here all the way back. Now, that's one of the things that I'm keeping in mind is that this vehicle is obviously meant to be driven forward. I could theoretically build extra blocks all the way around the vehicle, but uh, I don't think I have the cost. And it would also be very expensive depending on the blocks that I chose. So for the front, I always give quite a bit of extra room because this is what people are going to be seeing and this is what they're going to be shooting at. So again, if they want to get my wheels, they're going to have to work for it because they've got all this extra mass that they have to shoot through. So that's wheels. Remember, try and get them as wide as possible and try not to build your vehicle taller than it needs to be. If you do build it tall, keep that in mind when you're deciding how wide to make the wheels because that's going to determine what makes the difference between your vehicle staying upright and winning the fight or getting flipped on your back and being helpless while you're waiting for your flipper to activate it's just really that straightforward the other thing and the thing that this vehicle demonstrates the wrong way to do is the placement of your driver's seat Every vehicle must have a driver's seat. That's the, the rule. You will not be allowed to leave the garage unless your vehicle has a driver's seat. My driver's seat is right here. So again, if we're talking about uh, people seeing me from the front and attacking me from the front, the rule with the driver's seat is if the two blocks directly beneath the driver's seat are destroyed, the entire vehicle is destroyed. So in this case, I've got this wedge block in the front that's really my only protection for the two blocks beneath the driver's seat. So if someone wanted to destroy my vehicle, they would only have to literally destroy three blocks, this one and the two blocks immediately behind it. That would mean my driver's seat was no longer connected to anything and my vehicle would be destroyed. Now I built this with this cockpit here without knowing that rule, which is why it's here. If I were to redo this build, I would move the, the driver's seat farther back into the chassis so that I could protect it with more blocks around it as opposed to what it is now. So that's the second thing to keep in mind. You've got your wheels set up. You've got your, your base of your chassis all ready to go. Next, you want to think about where you're going to put your driver's seat so that it remains protected. The thing is, when you're driving around, you're not driving around from as though you're sitting in the driver's seat. Your view is kind of behind the vehicle. It's like a, a chase camera. So it'll be more something like this when you're driving around. So it doesn't matter where the, the pilot's head is. It doesn't determine how you view the world from your point of view. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing it's very important to keep in mind is the placement of the guns, right? We've got a wide wheelbase. We've got the driver's seat protected. The wheels are protected. Now we can think about some offense. And there's nothing worse than a vehicle that has, say, six guns, but only two of them can point at a target at any one time because of where the guns are placed. So, for example, if I put a gun on this side and a gun on the back and a gun on the top and then a gun over on this side and then maybe one in the front, there are going to be times when there's a very serious limitation on where your guns can shoot because the guns won't shoot through your vehicle. Now, you can't damage your own vehicle with fire from your own guns but the guns won't fire through the vehicle. So that's something to keep in mind, which is why all of my guns are sitting on the top of my vehicle because they can swivel 360 degrees. And this allows them to basically bear on any target, at least six guns, sorry, at least four guns, at least four guns at any given time can be brought to bear on a target without having to worry about them tripping over one another. 
in order to make this happen, we've got the two on the front. These ones are prone to shooting the back of the cockpit. Uh, like, for example, if this gun were pointing down into the left, it would actually be aiming at the back of the, the cockpit kind of thing. Wouldn't necessarily be all that effective. But if you're firing forward, these guys are great. And off to the sides, they'll usually kind of... There will be certain points where both guns will be able to reach a target on either side. So that's that's good. Then you got the guns on the far sides. These are well out of the way of any kind of major obstruction except for the cockpit. Again, my design, my first design. But what you want to be thinking here is in terms of separation so that someone who's firing at a particular point in your vehicle doesn't necessarily get to clump them all together and destroy them at once. It's when they're this close, it's still kind of a hazard. But more importantly, most people get kind of panicked when they see a vehicle like this driving towards them. So they aren't necessarily thinking in terms of aiming. They're thinking in terms of, do I shoot or do I run? It sounds like I'm exaggerating. It's really not. It's actually kind of fun to charge people in these vehicles and have all six guns going after them. So that's something else to keep in mind. And then, of course, this elevated section works really well for allowing these guns in the back to fire over these ones here, but also blocks these ones from firing behind if I'm aiming behind at something that was maybe following me or my vehicle got spun around. So that's, again, something to keep in mind is where are my guns? And given that they can rotate 360 degrees, if I position them somewhere else, are they going to have a better line of fire on a particular kind of arc or are they going to be in worse shape? Again, if I were to redo this design, these guns would be moved relative to wherever I moved this guy in the back so that they're not shooting it in the back all the time. That's kind of the thing. So we've got the wheels, wide wheelbase and protect the wheels. We've got the driver's seat. Protect the driver's seat as best you can. And then the gun placement, placing the guns so that you can have them useful as often as possible without having to just shoot the sides of your own vehicle. That's the three basics that I would say in terms of building a vehicle that's going to survive. And don't be afraid to make it solid and beefy looking like this, because every extra block on here is a block that someone has to shoot through, depending on what side they're coming after me from before they can get to my driver's seat, unless they come from the front. Well, let's go take a look at my second vehicle that takes some of the, the design concepts that worked well and uh, fixed a few that didn't. So this is my second vehicle. This is my tier two vehicle. And as you can see, it's built all out of the tier two armor blocks that we had used sparsely and the, the raging rabbits, the hazardous hair. <laughs> this vehicle is called and it's done a few things differently and a few things the same first of all the the cockpit is farther back it's still potentially vulnerable quite easily if someone can get some shots straight down the middle but the way it's oriented the chances of them doing that pretty slim uh if i was being competitive like really competitive about this build and how everything was set up i would build this out with solid blocks uh to protect it so that there would be a slope along that way and then it'll be solid blocks all the way back in this case i kind of ran out of blocks and i was just eager to uh start getting some tier, tier two tech points the wide wheelbase is still here you can see it's another very wide vehicle it's actually a fair bit wider than the rabbit by i think three blocks total uh it's also a longer vehicle again for stability's sake you can see from this is the steering wheel this is the frontmost wheel from the front of that wheel to the front there's quite a few blocks that you have to shoot through if you want to get to the wheels if you're going through the front and again that's by design we want to protect the wheels protect the steering wheels in particular so that you can maneuver and adjust and hopefully escape danger if you're in, in real trouble before you're disabled and just kind of a sitting duck the width the wheelbase is mostly back here in this section kind of the wheel well if you want to call it that uh, that's the widest part. This vehicle has never been flipped. I've driven over cliffs, slid down the cliff, and still landed on my wheels because of the way the, the vehicle is set up. It's almost impossible to flip. And that means 10 extra CPU for things like guns. The guns themselves, again, we're using a tiered system. We have low, medium, and high. Uh, the elevation alone makes them a little bit easier to shoot over one another without tripping over one another. That's kind of key. We've also got more guns on this guy. We've got eight instead of six, uh, and we're kind of starting to add in the higher tier. These are tier three. These are tier two. 
when I drive towards someone and I start shooting, they don't usually stick around for very long. Either they run or they get shredded. And it's quite fun to see that happen until someone with a plasma cannon boat uh, drives up and just vaporizes my entire vehicle. There's not much I can do about that. But, again, very simple design. I kind of like using the angled blocks to finish things off so that it doesn't look so blocky. It gets kind of a refined look to it, especially with the, the metal kind of texture and the reflectiveness. Uh, definitely something that I like to do. But following the three key concepts, protecting the cockpit within reason, you'll notice that it's not sticking up above anything. It may still be accessible from the front, but it's down below. You'd have to go through all the wheels and everything on either side to get to it. And the guns laid out nicely. Good access everywhere you could possibly want to go. Good coverage no matter where I'm shooting. I tend to lose a little bit out of the front guns when I'm shooting to the side and definitely to the back is when I don't really get anything out of them. But these four guns up here are still certainly capable of making someone think twice about driving all over me. So that's it. That was kind of our look at the basics of early tier building. And again, talking about the different kinds of armor that people are working with, setting things up, orienting cubes a certain way. We'll look at that in an advanced episode. For now, this is just for people who are getting started. Maybe you've built a few and you're not happy with the way it's been performing. Maybe this will give you a few ideas to think about. And if you're just getting into the game, again, it gives you some place to start. So the next video will probably be talking about my Tier 3 vehicle, which is under construction as we speak. If you want to be notified when I add that video, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social networks, Twitter or Google+. Links for those are in the information section below the video. Please leave your comments and feedback because I read them all and they're very helpful. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.